this section that we're talking about today is the introduction to polynomial functions. Now the quadratic stuff that we did yesterday, quadratics are a type of polynomials, but they're a specific type. Now we're going to talk about polynomials in general, where some of them may be third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, and so on. So a polynomial is a function that is smooth and continuous with no breaks, gaps, and holes. So that means you can draw, draw it without lifting up your pen at any point. Uh, the simplest form is just f of x equals x to some power, x of n, where n is an integer that is bigger than 0. So if we have x to the n power, that means the graph will have at most n real zeros and at most n minus 1 extrema. Now notice it says at most. So a fifth degree function could have up to five real zeros, but it could have less than that. And a fifth degree function could have five minus one, which is four. So four extrema. Remember, extrema are minimums or maximums. And, you know, like I said, a fifth degree function could have up to four of them, but it could have fewer than that. Now, a, the leading coefficient test will, te will tell you the end behavior of a function. And we looked at this last year a little bit. If we have an odd degree function, so the biggest exponent is odd, then the ends go in opposite directions. So if the leading coefficient is um, positive, the graph rises to the right and falls to the left. And if the leading coefficient is negative, the graph falls to the uh, right and rises to the left. If n is even, so we have an even degree function, like our quadratics for even degree functions, the ends go in both in the same direction. Both ends go up or both ends go down. So if leading coefficient is positive, the graph falls to the left and right. So if so the leading coefficient is negative. The graph falls to the left and right. And if the leading coefficient is positive, the graph rises to the left and right. So example one, determine the number of possible extrema, possible zeros, and end behavior of the function. So we have x to the third minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 2. Our biggest exponent is 3, so that means um, possible zeros, which you remember are the same as x-intercepts, possible zeros. There are 3 because of the third degree function. Possible extrema, Three minus one, which is two, and you don't need to show that math. I'm just, I'm just telling you how I got two. Take the degree of minus one. Now, end behavior. It is an odd degree with a positive leading coefficient. So that means, as x approaches negative infinity, which means the left side, the left side is going down to negative infinity, and as x approaches positive infinity. Y is also approaching positive infinity. So odd degree means the ends are going in opposite directions. Now example number four, we have x squared plus 4x to the third minus 2x to the fourth plus 5. Our highest exponent is right here, this 4. So this is actually our leading coefficient. So possible zeros. We're going to have 4 possible extrema, four minus one, which is three. And now the end behavior, negative leading coefficient in odd degree means that both sides are going down. So as X approaches negative infinity, Y approaches negative infinity. And as X approaches positive infinity, Y is also approaching negative infinity. Fix these up a little bit. 
So zeros of a polynomial function, uh, just kind of the different ways we can uh, talk about that. If x, uh, x equals a is a zero of a function, x equals a is a solution to the polynomial equation f of x equals zero. Because, you know, when we solved those quadratics yesterday, if we found those zeros, we set the function equal to zero and solve. Then x minus a would be a factor. Notice it's the opposite. And then a comma zero would be an x intercept. So all those things are related to um, the zero of a function. And also, it's, uh, it could also be called a root. So to find the zeros of a function, we set the function equal to zero, remove the GCF or greatest common factor from all terms if there is one, and then we can solve by factoring, quadratic formula, or long and synthetic division. Now remember, we have different techniques for factoring. We can factor uh, cubic functions by doing the grouping method or using the quadratic form uh, type of factoring as well. So if we look at these, to find the zeros of the polynomial, uh, x we have x to the third minus x squared minus 6x. So they all have an x in common. So we can factor that out. And we have x squared minus x minus 6. And then we can factor x squared minus x minus 6 to x minus 3 and x plus 2. So that is our factored form, and our zeros will be x equals 0, x equals 3, and x equals negative 2. Letter B, we have a 3 that we can factor out, and then we have x squared minus 4x plus 1, uh, inside, and we say, okay, can we um, factor that? No, there's no way to factor that. There aren't two numbers that multiply to negative 4 but add to positive 1. So we'll have to do the quadratic formula or completing uh, the square. Quadratic formula is probably uh, a little bit easier. And you may say, well, what about this 3 in front? Well, if you want, we can divide everything by 3. And what that does, that gives us 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. So then we can do quadratic formula or, like I said, completing the square. Either, uh, either method's okay. I said I was going to do quadratic formula. So quadratic formula, we have um, x equals negative b, so negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over uh, 2 times a, which is 1. So the stuff underneath the radical is going to be 16 minus 4, which is 12. So we have negative negative 4, which is going to be positive 4, plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. Okay, square root of 12 can be broken up into four, uh, square root of 4 times square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So we have uh, 4 plus or minus 2 times square root of 3 over 2. And because all of these values can be divided by 2, it's going to be x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. And that would be our solution. If you want to write them out separately, you could. Uh, but because it is a plus or minus type situation, you could just write it as a singular uh, entity like that. All right, now we're going to create a polynomial with the following zeros. So if our zeros are negative 3, positive 3, and positive 5, in factored form, it's going to be x plus 3, x minus 3, and x minus 5. Now, luckily for us, multiplying these two, since it is uh, a conjugate situation where we have x plus 3 and x minus 3, we don't need to FOIL that out. You could FOIL it out and then simplify, but we don't have to. So it's going to be x squared minus 9 and it's x minus 5. And then we can FOIL this. We have x to the third minus 5x squared minus 9x 
plus 45. And if you wanted to, you could factor this and you should get the original up here. So f of x would equal x to the third minus 5x squared minus 9x plus 45. Now, letter B, we have 0, 2, and negative uh, 1 third. And I think we can say, okay, we for 0 being uh, one of our x-intercepts, we don't want to write x minus 0, because x minus 0 is just x. So we're just going to say we have x, and then x minus 2. Now, for 1 third, you don't want to write this because then you're going to be multiplying everything by a one-third right there, and that's going to get messy. So instead, and, and you've never seen in factored form anything like that. It's always been a, uh, a whole number right here. If we go and think about this for a little bit, negative one-third being a zero, if we multiply both sides by three, we get 3x equals negative 1, and then we add 1 to both sides, we get 3x plus 1 equals 0. This is what we would do if we were trying to find the solution. We would take our parentheses and set it equal to 0, and then we would solve it and get x equals negative 1 third. So we actually went backwards here, and our parentheses is going to be 3x plus 1. All right, so then we can distribute that in x squared minus 2x times 3x plus 1 and then we can FOIL this we get 3x to the third we get plus x squared minus 6x squared minus 2x and then we're going to combine our like terms so we get f of x is equal to uh, 3x squared minus 5, I'm uh, sorry, 3x to the third, 3x to the third, and that's going to be minus 5x squared minus 2x. Then letter C, okay, I think again we can agree with x equals 6, it's going to be x minus 6 as one of our parentheses, but how do we handle this? And then we have to go back and think and say, okay, if, if those were our zeros, if those were our zeros, what would what would happen to get us there? Well, we would have x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 5, right? Because we have a positive solution and we have a negative solution. So if we have x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 5, if we subtract 2 from both sides, we get x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. All right, let's square both sides. When we square both sides, the left side, x minus 2 squared, foils, uh, sorry, uh, distributes out to x squared minus 4x plus 4 using our shortcut. And the right side equals 5. And then once we subtract 1 from both sides, we get x squared minus 4x uh, minus 1 equals 0. So this becomes our other parenthesis in our problem. So we have that x minus 6, and then we have x squared minus 4x minus 1. And then we distribute that. So we have x times x, that's x to the third. x times negative 4x is negative 4x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. And then negative 6 times x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 6 times negative 4x is positive 24x. And negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. And then we can combine our like terms and say that our function f of x is equal to x to the third minus 10x squared plus 23x plus 6. 
So there are other ways to deal with these two zeros, two minus square root of five uh, and two plus the square root of five. But I think going in reverse from what we would do is the better way of doing it. Because if you were given this factored function right here and I said solve it, you would say, okay, x equals six. And then you would set that equal to zero and solve and get your two solutions. So we're going that, uh, that doing that process in reverse. Now, the last one over here, we have that same issue again, 5 minus the square root of 2. Okay, so x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 2. Subtract 5 from both sides. x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Square both sides. We get x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 2. So then x squared minus 10x plus 23 equals 0. This is our other parenthesis here. So then when we write this out, it's going to be x minus, sorry, x plus 3 times x squared minus 10x plus 23. And then we'll FOIL this out x times x squared is x to the third, x times negative 10x is negative 10x squared, x times 23 is positive 23x, and then 3 times x squared is positive 3x squared, and then we have negative 30x, and then we have positive 69. Then we got to combine our like terms, so then f of x is going to equal x to the third, minus 7x squared, oops, I forgot an x right here, um, minus 7x, when we combine those, plus 69, making that our uh, general form polynomial. So this is why that algebra review was important at the beginning of the year because we're going to be using that here and we really need to make sure we're not making simple algebra mistakes. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.